Welcome back. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and this morning we're asking breast surgeon Dr. Elizabeth Arguelles about the challenges and impacts of breast cancer. Good morning, doctor. Thank you so much for coming on this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So we were just kind of chatting about the pandemic. Obviously, it's changed a lot of the way that we do things, but how has the pandemic impacted how we kind of look at and treat breast cancer specifically? So it's very concerning because women are worried about getting COVID and they're putting aside their routine screening. So they're not doing their breast exams. They're not going and getting their mammograms. They're not seeing their doctors. So women are actually presenting to our offices with cancer at a later stage when it's harder to treat. And that's something, you know, whether or not it's patients, it's not patients, what you're hearing uh, out there, it's because people are afraid the technicians are gonna be too close. Is that, you know, maybe one of the many reasons people are scared to come in? Absolutely, they're telling me that they don't wanna go to the imaging facilities. They're worried they're gonna pick up COVID there. What they need to realize is that we're healthcare professionals and we've always had their best interest in mind. We're wearing our masks, we're cleaning the facilities. You know, everything is very individualized so that they can safely get their screening. Because of course, if you catch the cancer early, it's easier to treat and a better chance for possible cure. When should people be going in to be getting screened? How often should we be checking at home? So every month you should be doing a self breast exam. I always joke with my patients, if you're not doing it, have your husband do it, have your boyfriend, your girlfriend, it doesn't matter, have someone touch your breasts every month. And then annually you should be getting a mammogram. Don't wait every two years or three years. The women who had their mammograms normally in 2019, who maybe felt something or weren't sure in 2020, but didn't wanna go or couldn't go because they were shut down, are now presenting, like I said, with a much larger cancer. So every year is so important to catch that cancer so that we can treat it before you maybe even can feel it. Now, what are we looking for? So any kind of lump, um, pain that doesn't go away, nipple discharge, especially bloody nipple discharge, nipple inversion, a rash on the breast that seems strange or doesn't go away, anything that makes you stop and think, hmm, something may not be right here. Mm. And this is something too, I mean, it's not always commonly associated uh, when people think of breast cancer, but I mean, breast cancer, as you mentioned, and you have the statistics, absolutely affects men as well. So men need to be doing these self exams. Absolutely, so especially if the male has a family history of breast cancer or prostate cancer, it's even more important. Um, but yeah, men, same thing. If they feel a lump or nipple discharge or bloody nipple discharge, absolutely seek attention because one out of every thousand cancers happens in a man. Wow, breast yeah. cancer runs pretty heavily in my family. I have an aunt who's also had it twice. You know, that really freaks me out. I, you know, and I know that there are other people like that. They have that family, um, you know, line of, of having it. You know, how, how can we kind of help to prevent that? Can you kind of ease our fears a little bit? Well, definitely the self-awareness is the most important thing and also self-advocacy. So women who have, or men who have a family history of breast cancer should be starting their screening at least 10 years younger than their first degree relative, like a mother or sister. Mm -hmm. um, they may also want to ask their provider if they qualify for any additional screening, like ultrasounds to help cut through dense breast tissue or even MRI screening. Um, a lot of times we do MRIs on especially younger women that can help detect uh, faster growing cancers that you wouldn't necessarily feel at that time. Wow. Something that always interests me is that, you know, you're doing uh, either a self exam or maybe you're, you're having symptoms of any kind. People really turn to the internet and, and you know, you're Googling something and then of course your mind starts to, to wander. Uh, is it a little bit more important, especially when you're talking about breast cancer to call Yes. A specialist, call a doctor. Like if you want to Google those, those you know symptoms yourself. Okay, that's fine. But still consult a medical professional. WebMD, not not <laughs> actually no, a medical no. professional. No, no, and absolutely because you pointed out a good point here that not all lumps are cancer. A lot of them are just cysts or fibroadenomas, which is a dense clump of breast tissue that's not cancer. So you may have something that's completely normal. Not all discharge is cancer. You know, so not everything is something you have to be afraid of. Um, but if you go to a doctor who can get you worked up, we can figure it out and then we can get you the help that you need. Yeah, don't just turn to Google. Cause some, I mean, you know, a lot of people do I mean, it. I'm, I'm guilty. guilty. <laughs> yeah. I'm 100% guilty where I'm like, well. there's snot coming out of my nose. What is this? <laughs> you know, I, I tend to freak out. I'll be honest with you. And then you. of course you go to the worst possible of course you know, scenario. You do. You're scrolling down. Everything's like, you're fine. WebMD is like, hey, your nose <laughs> is going to fall off, you know, and, and that's not always the case. It's not. Thank you so much for joining us this Thank morning. You. Yes, absolutely. And you'll be back next hour. So we have some more questions. We'll be touching on some more of that. Thanks so much again for joining Thank us. You.